Welcome to Fave and Friends. We're so glad you're here with us. You are important and we can't wait to spend the next 30 minutes with you, right everybody? Absolutely. You are important. That's right. Shoebox Drop-Off Week is here and we have on our Faith and Friends this week, junior reporters. Oh They're going to give us some final shoebox <laughs> ideas. Shoeboxes are accepted here at TV44 through this coming Sunday. Looking forward to that. Also some last minute Thanksgiving ideas as we head back into the Faith and Friends kitchen. <laughs> and when's the last time you visited the Restore? Today, we'll take you there. Plus an interview with author and speaker Israel Wayne. What a show. Let's get right to it. We want to start things right, and that means going straight to the Bible. And today's scripture verse comes from the book of Philippians 2, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather, in humility, Value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of the others. You know, as we are approaching Thanksgiving, certainly that's something to keep in mind that you know, we want to be thankful for the others. We want to put others' issues, interests ahead of our own. That you know, as, as the Bible teaches us, do unto others as we would have done to us. The golden rule is the reason why it's called the golden rule. Mm -hmm. and to that point, I think it's interesting once we do that, once we put others first, the unity that does come, that we can be one as a body of Christ, not when we're looking out for our own interests, right. but looking out for the interest of others. Definitely. Well, focusing on the interests of others, specifically disadvantaged children around the world. That is part of the focus behind the Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Project. And this week is the week to drop off <laughs> your boxes. Mm. That's right. Maybe you're still putting your boxes together. Well, no worries. There's still time. And packing a box is really so Easy, Andy. I think you're still putting yours together, right? Yeah. 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 I'm not surprised. <laughs> are my shoe boxes too big? No, it just my means that you're going to make larger. some children very, very happy. Okay. Okay. So that's the big box. <laughs> the big box. Well, Grace and Abby Beck invite you to join their last minute packing party. Hello. Welcome to our packing party. Hello. I'm Abby. And I'm Grace. So we have all this stuff here. Now, Abby, why do we have all this stuff? We're going to be doing this packing party for Chris for Operation Christmas Child. So we have some boxes. We here. have these plastic boxes, but, but you can also have shoe boxes from shoes. We have one with just an open side top, or you can have some that just open regular. We have this box that is, you can use that opens like this. But we preferably like these kind because they're usually bigger in size. So we have a lot of different things here, and we're going to pack our shoe boxes. Hi, Freddy, Fred. Have fun in wherever you go, maybe Africa. And so we're going to pack different things like tissues or pens and pencils, things that they can use now. For school. We have chocolate. Should we pack chocolate, Abby? No siree. Chocolate will melt on the way. Oh. Mm -hmm. More chocolate? Mm -hmm. So we have quite a few different things we're going to pack, like little plush toys. And then there's this make your own snow. And this is basically good for places that don't have snow. So good luck, Mr. Snow. And we have things like candy which we ha I have some Twizzlers. So you're telling me we can't eat this, I mean like you can't send this, right? No. Okay. There we go. <laughs> me and I would be. So we also have things like, mm. games. And we have soap. You can pack soap and then people can wash themselves. Hmm. Here we go. Here's a good example. Stretchy lizards. Great for the exercise. You can pack a lot of different things. And we have hmm, quite a few. You can do a box for girls or a box for boys. Who are you doing yours for, Abby? I think I'm going to base mine on boys because I have most boys. Okay. 
So, um, great things to pack are like a family pack of toothbrushes because you know you're sending it to one person, but um, I've heard that some kids in orphanages and stuff have to share one toothbrush. So these things, these things are good. I think my shoebox is getting too stuck. Hey, we forgot the most important part. What's that? We forgot to pack the prayer. Oh yes, let's do that right now. So we're just gonna pray over these boxes and hope they bless some kids in a different country. All right. So, dear Jesus, we pray that you will send these boxes to kids across the globe and that they will come to know you by this box and that they will just really enjoy these and we can use these as a good opportunity to minister to them. Amen. Well, thank you, Abby and Grace. Always an important step to pray over those boxes before shipping them out and allowing God to use them for His glory. Well, this week it is Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes, but next week it's Thanksgiving. And for many of you, that means meal preparations. Well, on today's Lost Creek Care Rehabilitation Center, stop in the kitchen. We're taking a traditional Thanksgiving menu item and showing how you can give it a little flair. And so to keep things on the healthy side, we're making easy homemade cranberry sauce. Mm. And so you can go to the website, fantasticfood.com, and see the recipe. Well, this recipe is Where's the can simple. that you just you know, take the lid right. off and you go plop? This is homemade. And so and we're going to do that. It. But it is simple, I promise you. And so here's our ingredients. Are you ready? Yes. We're going to have 12 ounces of fresh or frozen cranberries. So we have here in the bag, that's about three cups. We have a half cup pure maple syrup. We have zest and juice of one fresh orange and then one table chopped fresh thyme or one tablespoon of chopped fresh thyme and that is optional um, for all of you who maybe not be, may not be thyme fans. <laughs> all right, we've got the orange clearly and so we need one of you guys to both juice it and zest it. Why don't you zest it first, Andy? How do you that's, zest that's the orange? orange? We have I think we go over this before. No, use this tool. That's what I was excited to do. You do that. Right I'm going to do the half Which cup side? Uh, maple syrup. I don't even. Okay, and all we're going to do is well, put all of these ingredients in the pan. And so I'll give you this to, good idea. to zest it. <laughs> I'm just going to zest right? it on our tablecloth. Okay. And that's fine. <laughs> so zest you just the do this, orange, right? You just right? kind of. Yep. The whole all, thing? Uh, yep, the whole one whole fresh orange. I just cut myself. And then. And then Matt. Why are we. You're you going to do the part? half cup. Well, that's the zest. If you, it's, you'll find out once you taste the end product. But half cup of pure maple syrup. And this is actually local uh, pure maple syrup right. being made right in Ohio. And I love so, maple syrup. It's so good. Well, a half cup is what we need. And so, yeah, oh, pretty thick. There you go. And you can go a little, a little higher. Again, a little more. Yep, a little more. Still want to spill it when I'm transporting, you know? Yep. There you go, right there. All right. Keep going, Andy. <laughs> You're getting there. <laughs> How much time you have in this food segment? He's going to be <laughs> zesting for the entire so time. What we're, we're going to do when we're done is going to add these all into the pan. And on medium to high heat, we're going to boil them all together. And so you, this is maybe a time you want to go turn your stove on just enough. prepare. Yeah. Now what am I doing? Juicing it? You're going to need to juice it. So, well, you got to, here, I have a knife for you. If you're oh. Wow. <laughs> Look at that knife. That feels <clears throat> Go ahead and danger. cut it in half. I don't have a cutting board. There, it's all right. Yeah, it's good job. Oh, the cutting oh, it's right, right there. Here. How about that? Thank you. I can cut an orange. And Matt, you can go ahead and add this to the pan. Oh, we're yeah. ready? Okay. They're, they're all going in the same Watch out, Andy. Ah! There you go. This might not be as zesty as what the recipe calls for. Since what are you saying, Zach? <laughs> Andy gave up on his zesting a little bit. There Nobody you go. Eats the skin. It's fresh squeezed orange juice right here. That's look pretty good. You can take a bite out of the orange if you'd like. <laughs> I'm on camera, so I'm not going to waste that. Oh my goodness. Ew. Well, go ahead Terrible. and put the juice. <laughs> Terrible. Put the juice in there. And Matt, why don't you get our cranberries? Again, this is 12 <laughs> ounces or three cups of fresh or frozen cranberries. Is the, uh, the heater on there for medium. the stove? Yep, all right. medium. And so, I'm going to dump all of these cranberries in. You guys, I didn't even ask. Do you like cranberry sauce? I do like the gelatin version. I don't like that yeah. one. Made as much, but this, this <laughs> the one that comes out of the can. That's right. Very processed. There you go. We get oh, all everything. In there. All of them. Yep. All right. And you're gonna I've stir that together like a little bit. Cranberry. Give it a try. Can you just eat up. them? You can. They're cranberries. There you go. <clears throat> Mix that together a little bit. You're gonna throw it on the stove top like and an apple texture. 
In about 10 minutes or so, what you're going to do, you're going to boil that together, occasionally stirring. I don't know. Let me give you a little more zest. <laughs> but once you zest it up, what you're after is Flip once the side. cranberries pop, they'll be on the stove oh. top and they'll boil a little bit and the cranberries will pop, after which you know that your cranberry sauce is ready. And really, depending on what kind of consistency you, you lost want, juice. Get ju Did I get you <laughs> there's juice flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> once you get the consistent, depending on the consistency that you want, you can leave them on for longer or less time on the stove top. Might be a little skin in there. But go ahead and throw those on the stove top there. And we're not going to wait 10 minutes. So I actually have a finished Ooh. product. Zach, I don't know about this one. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Leave, leave it go there. I think the fire alarms are going to go off. <laughs> and our finished product here. <laughs> I'm wafting. <It's>, this <laughs> finished product smells pretty good. So though. why don't you taste our finished product? And this actually, this, this finished product was on the stove top for almost a half hour. And mm. so you can see. It's more like a jelly consistency. This was made by professionals, right? <laughs> That's right. Uh, this was actually created by Grace and Abby, our 10 and 12 year old junior reporters that you just seen on That's the That's good. That is good. That's right. It's tasty. And so again, this is about a half hour's worth of on the stove and you get like a jelly consistency if you can see inside of here. It's and a clear bowl. But what happens is the cranberries pop there. And so we encourage you to try it out. It's gonna be quick and easy. It's gonna be an opportunity to make something for your Thanksgiving dinner. You just combine them all in the pot, and away you go. Can I double dip? Go for it. <laughs> well, he eats the rest of the cranberry sauce. We want to let you know that this recipe is courtesy of www.fantasticfood.com, and you can rewatch this and all of our no, food good. segments and recipe segments by visiting our website, <laughs> wtlw.com, and just click on the Faith and Friends <laughs> link. All right, Mark, take it away. Well, thank you, Zach. Maybe you need a special tray or other item to display your Thanksgiving meal, or maybe you're just looking for Thanksgiving decorations or perhaps a, a bigger table in which to serve your Thanksgiving dinner. Well, all that and so much more can be found at Lima's ReStore. It's located on the corner of Metcalf and Elm Streets in Lima, but ReStore is so much more than just a store. Jennifer recently took a visit. Paint, housewares, appliances, tools, windows, cabinets, doors, and decorations, books, rakes, almost anything that comes to mind, you can find it here. It's almost easier to tell you what we don't take. We don't take clothes and we don't take mattresses. That old couch that you think is really nice, it's just dated, we'll take that and we'll turn it into money to build homes and serve families in Allen County. This is Lima's ReStore, a division of Habitat for Humanity. It's a retail environment but it's also a nonprofit organization, creating beneficial opportunities for the entire community. Manager Jim Lewis likes to call it the triple win. We solve a lot of problems here. So the first problem that we solve is for the person that doesn't know what to do with that old couch. So we take that old couch and we get rid of it for them, so it's a win for them. But in that win of itself, again, is that that good feeling that they get, hey, not only am I getting rid of my couch, I didn't even have to take it to them, they came and got it, uh, it begins a win because of what it, that couch is then going to do. So the next win becomes the person that comes in and is looking for a deal. So whether that person maybe can't necessarily afford a new one or somebody's just looking for a good deal, they can find it here. So that becomes a win for that person, it becomes an economical thing for them, I can afford that. Um, the next win is that money that's generated goes to build home and serve people in Allen County. So that's where it's like the triple blessing in my opinion. These days that triple blessing is impacting a family in Delphus, Habitat's latest home building project. It's also assisting in repair projects with other Allen County properties and providing volunteer opportunities for many. But the ReStore itself has no limitations. It has the ability to help anyone. Who can shop here? So everybody can shop here. We get a lot of people saying, I didn't know you were here. I didn't know I could shop here. So some people think that only Habitat homeowners can shop here, for example. Well, that's just not true. This is open to the public. So anybody can come to the ReStore and shop. And with inventory turning over approximately every two weeks, this is one location that is worth a second visit, a third visit, and many more. Located on the corner of Metcalf and Elm Streets in Lima, consider ReStore for your next construction project, renovation idea, or maybe just a day out shopping with friends. Lima's ReStore is open Tuesday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturday, 10 to 3. We'll accept donations on Saturdays until 5 p.m. For, for more information, call 419-222-4257 or go online at ReStoreLima.org.
Earlier this month, author and speaker Israel Wayne conducted a family renewal seminar at First Baptist Church in Van Wert. He also took the time to sit down with Jennifer to discuss his newest book, Questions Jesus Asks, Where Divinity Meets Humanity. Israel Wayne is a national author and speaker, husband, father of eight children with the ninth on its way, coming just in a few months. And he is the author of this brand new book, Questions Jesus Asks. We're so happy to have him in the studio today. Israel, thank you for joining us on Faith oh, and Friends. Great to be with you. We could talk probably about so many topics. You are, uh, you, you are a speaker in the family network. You travel around, you talk about um, how to revive families in a godly way. Mm -hmm. um, but we're gonna talk today about this particular book, Questions Jesus Ask, Where Divinity Meets Humanity, came out just earlier this year, so it's relatively new. Um, talk a little bit about the inspiration behind this book. Sure. Well, I wrote a book before this that was called Questions God Asks. And it came from a study that I was doing through the Old Testament. And when I was studying through the Old Testament, I noticed something that was a bit um, surprising to me. And that was that I noticed multiple times in the Bible where God asked questions. And I thought, why would God ask a question? I mean, God is omniscient. God knows everything. So what is the purpose of these questions? And so it occurred to me that if God was asking a question, it wasn't for his benefit. It wasn't that he didn't know the answer. So it must be for the benefit of the person who's being asked the question. There's something that he wants them to think about. There's something he wants them to consider. And so what I did is I took each of those questions and I tried to chart them out topically. Like, what is the main topic or theme that this question addresses? So, for example, in the Old Testament, God asked Moses, what's in your hand? And he asked Elijah in the cave, what are you doing here? And he asked Abraham, where is your wife? And he asked Balaam, who are these men with you? And so on. L lots of these different questions. So I thought the questions must be for these individuals. What is it that God wants them to think about and what are the topics being addressed? When I wrote out the different topics, I was surprised because it looked like, to me, it looked like a systematic theology manual. Mm. It was almost all of the major doctrines of the Christian faith addressed in the questions that God asked. And I thought, I have to write this book. I have to explore this and sort of flesh out these questions. And I also believe that God never asks something arbitrarily or capriciously. If God asks a question, there's a, a purpose for us as well, because it's included in Scripture. So if there wasn't some meaning or some application for us as individuals, God would have just left it out of the Bible. So because it's included there, the, the question is also for us. There's something God wants us to think about. There's something he wants us to consider. These questions are applicable for us as well, thousands of years later. So I wrote uh, Questions God Asks, which was published last year. Well, and when I wrote out the topics for this book, Questions Jesus Asks, I was surprised and delighted to find that the topics covered in the questions Jesus asked in the Gospels were completely different topics than the questions God had asked in the Old Testament, which I found astounding. Because again, it looked like a systematic theology manual, but addressing very different aspects of Christian theology uh, through his questions in the New Testament. So I loved writing both of these books because I learned so much in the process and I felt like I, I came to know God better and I, I came to understand Jesus better and uh, learned so much and included in the, these books the kind of the historical background of some of these situations and just to help people kind of flesh out the context of these questions as well. Well, some of the topics that are covered here uh, family, discipleship, money, healing, counseling, fear, servanthood, apologetics, suffering, and I'm just naming a few of them. Um, there's 20 chapters. Every single one of these chapters focuses on a relevant topic mm -hmm. in our lives today, yet starts with a question that Jesus asked and dives right into scripture. I love the fact that you have so many scripture references in each chapter, yet you also have um, modern day facts. You've done a lot of research, a lot of study to bring everything together to, to a modern day situation. I wanted it to be the kind of thing that people could do as a group study, maybe as a small group. Uh, certainly fits well for uh, family devotions or just individual Bible study. Uh, but with these different topics, so if you wanted to study what does the Bible teach on faith or what does it teach on worship or what does it say about evangelism or healing or whatever the different topic might be. I wanted people to be able to uh, do this as an individual study or as a group study 
And uh, the chapters are fairly short. And one thing I included in questions Jesus asks that uh, I, I hadn't thought of in the first chapter uh, was I included something in each chapter from church history as well. Mm -hmm. Because when I wrote the first chapter and I did a speaking tour and I went out and talked about uh, the book, um, in these churches where I was talking, I would name people that I thought would be known by everybody in the church. John Wesley or Jonathan Edwards or Charles Spurgeon or Andrew Murray or some of these names. And I got these blank stares. And, uh, and I would ask, are you familiar with these names? Do you know who I'm talking about? No. D.L. Moody. Do you know who? No, never heard of them. And so uh, it occurred to me that we've kind of impoverished ourselves within contemporary Christianity by not knowing so many of the people who have um, kind of laid a foundation for us in, in wrestling through some of these issues. So in this book, I just have a, at least a short snippet in every single chapter, uh, f not just from scripture, but also from uh, individuals within church history too, just to help kind of introduce us to some of these great men and women of the faith from the past 2,000 years. I love the fact that every single chapter starts with a personal story or something interesting. You do a great job of drawing the reader in. Thank you. But the fact that this could be read, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a, it's, it could be considered a manual in a sense because mm. like you said, it does have that background. Um, I found myself wanting to read from chapter to chapter, but loving the fact that you can pick just to say you want to study more on discipleship. So you just jump right to chapter four and um, it's okay that you haven't read yes. before and it's okay that you haven't read after because this is going to be a launching pad to give you that nugget which you need to get started to be able to then continue to study further on that subject. So I had the Old Testament study with questions God asks, the New Testament study, particularly the Gospels uh, with questions Jesus asks. And, and there's one question that Jesus asked that was outside the Gospels and that was a question that he asked to uh, Saul on the road to Damascus where he said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And so I wrote that uh, chapter on uh, Christian persecution, and the persecution of, of the church across the world and throughout church history. And, um, but for the most part, it's focused on the Gospels. And so part of why I, I wrote the book is I've seen that what, I've worked in Christian publishing for 22 years. I've seen that what tends to sell um, are what we call self-help books. So if you can teach somebody how to get out of debt in 30 days, how to lose weight in 30 days, how to revolutionize your marriage in 30 days, those kinds of books sell. Um, Bible studies tend not to sell. And part of it is that they're academic often and people kind of get bogged down in the tedium. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to take really big concepts, you know, the big issues of the Christian faith, and I wanted to make them accessible. I wanted anyone, whether you have a theological background or not, well, even if you're a brand new Christian, that you could dive into this and read it, and it would be enjoyable, and it would be understandable. And so I try very hard to explain terms, if I'm using a big word, theological word, explain what that is and what that means. And so um, I, I really attempted not to just shoot over everyone's head. I want them to, to get a, a thirst for the scripture and to come to really uh, develop Bible study as a, a part of their daily life. I, I think it's so important and it's such a neglected mm. aspect of Christianity today that um, unfortunately we neglect scripture. So I want to point people to scripture and I hope these books will be part of that process. Well, Israel Rain, the book is called Questions Jesus Asked. Thank you for writing it oh. because as, I, as we were talking before this interview, I get so many books that are given to me and I, I look at so many new books and there's a lot of self-help books. There's a lot of books that don't really dive in. And this one I think dives in in a way that is not daunting. Mm. You can sit down and read this um, without worrying that you're gonna have to go look up every single word. It's going to speak to you, but yet it's going to teach you. And I, I think that that very beneficial, not just for the Christian community, but for the entire reading community as well. There's a verse that jumps out to me in John 17, three. It says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And so that was really the purpose behind the book. I want people to know God. I want them to know Jesus Christ because that's the big, I mean, that's eternal life. Right. And so uh, if that happens, if I can encourage that uh, through these books, then um, it was definitely worth writing it and uh, I think people will be encouraged and blessed by it. And I'm grateful for the uh, opportunity to be able to share it here.
All right, well, we still have one copy of this book, and you can win that copy. As you know, we have had a giveaway going on. All you have to do is email faithandfriends at WTLW.com to get your entry, or go to our website, faithandfriends.wtl, or faithandfriends.wtl. Just look at the screen. The information is on the screen. Enter to win this book. Or you can go to Israel's website. Possibly you'd like to have him come speak in your area or you'd like more information about the other books that he has written. All of that information can be found on that location as well. Israel Wayne, author of Questions Jesus Asks, Where Divinity Meets Humanity. Thanks so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you, God bless. We have a day for giving thanks. We have two for getting deals. Now we have Giving Tuesday, a day when we come together to give. You can give time, give money, give goods, give your voice. Anyone, anywhere can make a difference. How will you give? Yes, that is a reminder, Giving Tuesday is coming up very soon. In fact, it's December the 1st. I want to encourage you to take this opportunity to offer a one-time gift to TV44. You may be wondering, how is a gift to TV44 used? Well, it's your opportunity to reach out to those who don't have a Christian network around them and be that special community that supports them in their walk with Christ. Your financial contribution allows TV44 to be a church for those that are shut in, who still want to hear the message of the Bible but can't get out of their homes. And your giving creates a link with the next generation as we reach out to the area youth with their academics, music, sports, and most importantly, the relationship with Jesus Christ. The 2006 Continuing Christ Mission Campaign is underway as we plan the 2016 budget now. We're grateful for your pledge or one-time gift as we continue Christ's mission of sharing the gospel into 2016. Had a uh, $50 pledge from Findlay, mm -hmm. a uh, ongoing monthly pledge from Crydersville, and a $50 a month pledge from Herod, $10 a month from DeGraff. Wow, awesome. You know, there are five easy and convenient ways to give to TV44. You can donate by mail or in person at 1844 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio, 45807. You can donate over the phone with your credit card at 419-339-4444 or online at WTOW.com. You can also sign up for monthly automatic withdrawal by emailing contact at WTOW.com or call to find out more. And one more reminder, Operation Christmas Child shoeboxes will be accepted through this coming Sunday. So this is the week. Five o'clock Sunday is your deadline. Give us a call at 419-339-4444 for more information. And Andy, would you give us one final look at our scripture? Verse? I would love to. Philippians 2, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, any comfort from His love, any common sharing in the Spirit, any tenderness and compassion that make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Mm -hmm. Certainly some just good stuff to go over in our minds as we're walking through the streets of Lima or wherever you're watching this from, see those ways that you can reach out to others and serve them. Thanks for joining us.